the Kraft Food Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. How'd you like to own a brand new Ford Victoria every year for five years? This is first prize in Kraft Oil's sensational Name the Cake contest. All you do to win is name a wonderful new cake made with Kraft Oil. The recipe comes free with every bottle. Bake it, name it, and win a new Ford Victoria every year for five years or one of 1,850 Dormeyer electric appliances. Listen for complete details in a few minutes. Well, even in a town the size of Summerfield, there are times when Mr. Peavy has very little to do but listen to the sounds go by his pharmacy. Without taking his eyes off his crossword puzzle, he can identify them. For instance, he knows this is Mrs. Fletcher, who runs the beauty parlor next door, parking her car. She's late again. And when Mr. Peavy hears something like this coming down the street... He knows it's a horse. And when he hears these steps, which he does every day... He knows it isn't a horse, because horses don't come in his store. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gellerstein. Baboon. Who, me? Uh, no, no, I, I'm putting down a word in this crossword puzzle. Oh. What can I do for you today? Well, I have a cup of coffee, Peavy. Yeah, well, I'm glad you dropped in. What's on your mind, Peavy? Mr. Gildersleeve, would you care to join me in some form of mild exercise these evenings? Exercise? We could bowl, swim at the Y, toss the medicine ball. <laughs> what a picture. A druggist tossing the medicine ball. <laughs> it is a pretty big pill, all right. <laughs> <laughs> what gave you this idea? Mrs. Peavy. Oh? She got out the old album the other night and took a look at our wedding picture. She shook her head and said, Mr. Peavy, you're not the man I married. She did? And I told her I was twice the man she married. <laughs> Around the waist, anyway. Oh, my goodness. But I think Mrs. Peavy's right about the exercise. I, I've been tied down to the pharmacy pretty much the past 30 years. Well, a man ought to exercise at least once every 30 years. That's what it is. How about going bowling tomorrow night? Tomorrow night? Oh, I'm sorry, Peavy. Well, if you feel bowling is a little strenuous, how about starting with marbled? No, I'm not available. I think I'm babysitting tomorrow night. <laughs> Blonde or brunette? <laughs> no, I don't have a date. But Marjorie's going over to Mother Thompson's where little Linda is spending the week, so I'll be sitting with Ronnie. Well, I thought Bertie usually stayed with Marjorie's children. Well, I just talked to Bertie before I left the office, and she's going to be on the radio tomorrow night. You don't say. Yeah. You know, her cake won first prize at the county fair. Mm, she deserved it. That was a fine cake. Well, at first it was just going to be an interview, and then they found out she sings, and now it looks like Bertie's going to put on a show for them. My, my. She's quite excited about it. You'll have to listen in. Yeah, I'd like to, but I'd better get some exercise and take off a little weight. Peavy, you can get your exercise next week. Mrs. Peavy expects me to start getting my weight down this week. Yeah, all right. Now I know who carries the weight around your house. Well, now I... Well, maybe she does it that When I came home, I found a note on my door saying you wanted to see me. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Miss Marjorie, but I can't babysit tomorrow night. Oh? I got good news. Bertie's going to be on the radio. Oh, really? Yes, ma'am. Bertie's going to be on the radio tomorrow night. She's going to talk about cooking and she's going to sing a song. Oh, that's wonderful. Hi. Hello, Leroy. Hello, Leroy. Ain't that exciting, Miss Marjorie? What's exciting? Oh, it certainly is. How did it happen, Bertie? Yeah, how did what happen? Well, the man who's got the cooking program called. What's cooking? Oh, please, Leroy. Bertie's trying to tell me something. Oh. Well, the man wants me on the radio. What man? What radio? Because my cake won first prize. Is that all you have to do to get on the radio? Bake a cake? 
Oh, Bertie, I'm so happy for you. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Yeah, me too, but I'll be slap happy if you don't tell me what's going on. Leroy, Bertie's going to appear on the radio tomorrow night because they take one first prize at the county fair. Why did you say so? See, that's swell, Bertie. Oh, thank you. And she's going to sing, Leroy. Yeah? How'd they know you could sing, Bertie? Well, they found out in sort of a roundabout way. Yeah? How? I told them. <laughs> <laughs> He asked him, they asked me what I could do, and I told him I'd sing, dance, juggle. You can't juggle. Well, Bertie could learn by tomorrow night. Bertie'd stand on her head to get on the radio. (laughs) Well, I guess I'll have to get Unky to sit with Ronnie tomorrow night. Hey, how about me babysitting for you, Marge, huh? How about it, 50 cents an hour? Why should I pay you 50 cents an hour? 35? 30? 25? Leroy, why should I pay even 25 cents an hour when Uncle will do it for nothing? Well, you only get what you pay for. <laughs> why accept an inferior product? Now, don't let Unky hear you say that. Besides, you never sat with baby. What's the sitting? How about it, Marge? Can I? I'm broke. I need the money. Now, Leroy. No kidding. I'm flat. I haven't got a dime. I can't even go to a movie. I have to stand on the street and watch television through the store windows. <laughs> What a pitiful picture. Yeah. All right, you can babysit tomorrow night. Well. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Back to the chimney. Yes, Bertie? How about that with you? Bertie, if you're going to sing tomorrow night, save your voice. Uh, say, I better tell Marjorie I'll sit with Ronnie tomorrow night, now that you can't do it. I think Leroy's going to sit with little Ronnie. Leroy? He doesn't know anything about babysitting. Yeah, I'll tell him I'll take over. Leroy! Yeah? What's this I hear about you babysitting? Yeah, Marjorie's letting me stay with Ronnie. Yeah, well, it's nice of you to volunteer, my boy, but I think you're a little young for that responsibility. Young? Are you kidding? Leroy, you wouldn't know what to do. You haven't had any experience with children. Gosh, I was one myself. What better experience can you have? I mean experience babysitting. Well, when I was a baby, I was sat with, and I watched. (laughs) If I remember correctly, you were practically sat on. You were a handful. That's why I'll make such a good babysitter. I know all the tricks to watch for. Well, I'm sorry, my boy, but it's a school night, and you shouldn't be up late. Oh, for corn's sake. Besides, we have to think of little Ronnie. The child has to feel safe and protected. Okay, I'll protect him. I'll take my junior G-man badge. No, no, with me in the house, little Ronnie will feel he's well taken care of. And that's important to young children. Well, Ronnie and I get along great. We play together all the time. He wouldn't be afraid with me. Excuse me! Yes, Bertie? Oh? Well, I'm Ronnie, Miss Kilkeed, and Leroy's in the parlor. Hi, Leroy. Hi, kid. Well, Ronnie. Hello, Uncle Roy. We were just talking about you. I didn't do anything. No, no, we didn't mean that. I was just trying to prove a point to Leroy. Okay, Uncle, you can babysit. I give up. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't take that attitude. I want you to know why you shouldn't sit. Now, we'll leave it up to the child. What child? You. Now then, Ronnie, you know what you want. You have a mind of your own. When your mommy leaves you tomorrow night and you have to be tucked into your little bed all alone, who would you rather have with you? Leroy or good old Uncle Mort? I want Leroy. Oop. <laughs> Leroy, I'm babysitting. He isn't old, old, old enough to know what he wants. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Somebody's going to win a new Ford Victoria every year for five years. It could be you. And 1,850 other families are going to win valuable Dormeyer electric appliances. To win one of these wonderful prizes, all you do is name a luscious new cake that's made with Kraft oil. It's easy. You'll find the cake recipe printed on the inside of the label when you buy a green-capped bottle of Kraft oil. Just bake it and send Kraft the name you think best describes how good it is. 
First prize is a smart new Ford every year for five years. You get a deluxe Ford Victoria the first year and then trade it in on a new model every year for the next four years at no further cost to you. Additional prizes include 100 Dormeyer electric broiler rotisseries, 200 Dormeyer electric blankets, 200 Dormeyer power mixers, 250 Dormeyer portable mixers, and 1,100 Dormeyer fry wells. Altogether, 1,851 prizes. You'll find entry blanks for Kraft Oil's Name the Cake Contest at your grocer's, where you buy Kraft Oil. The entry blank gives you the full prize list, news about a special bonus prize, and complete contest rules. Kraft Oil's Name the Cake Contest ends in just a few weeks, so get your entry in soon. Remember, you may win a Ford Victoria every year for five years, or one of 1,850 Dormeyer appliances. Well, Leroy had a chance to babysit with Marjorie's little boy, Ronnie, but the great Gildersleeve didn't feel that his nephew was quite ready for his misassignment. So he's taking over himself tonight, in spite of the fact that Ronnie expressed a preference for Leroy. I know Leroy is disappointed. And by George, never send a boy to do a man's work, I always say. Oh, well, I'll surprise the boy with a little bonus next allowance day. Yeah, I'll get a couple of magazines and some of Peavy's cigars and be set for the night. Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this evening? You know, I'm staying with little Ronnie this evening, so I want some cigars and you know, I better take a couple of magazines. Yeah, well... Leroy tells me he was asked to sit, but you hadn't met him. PV babysitting is a serious business, and I insisted on going myself. Well, I'd say Leroy should prove a very capable sitter. Of course, you've had more experience sitting than he has. <laughs> <laughs> All right, PV. You have quite a broad background. PV, <laughs> you're treating this very lightly. Caring for children is quite an art. And I happen to have a flair for it. Oh, my, yeah. <laughs> Babysitting isn't child's play, you know. You have to be on your toes every minute, ministering to their needs, knowing when to say don't. Quite a responsibility. Well, when I was growing up, babysitting wasn't a problem. In fact, they hadn't even thought of the word. Oh? Who sat with the baby when the parents were out? Well, at my house, the family was so large, we just sat with each other. <laughs> The larger the family got, the less our parents could afford to go out, so it wasn't a problem. <laughs> what kind of magazines do you want, Mr. Gildersleeve? I know the kind of cigars you smoke. So, uh, are those good cigars, Petey? No, but they're the kind you smoke. <laughs> oh, three cigars. That'll be 16 cents. Petey, no matter what you say, the El Lobo is a good cigar. Well, you can't get any more for your money unless you want to roll up some more newspapers. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I came in here. Uncle, before I go, shall I write down the things for you to do? No, Margie, I know how to take care of things. You better write it down for him, Margie. <laughs> Leroy. Why are you hanging around? Well, if I can't sit with Ronnie, I thought I'd watch you sit. Maybe I'd better write things down, Uncle. It isn't necessary, Marjorie. I've got a mind like a steel trap. Something snapped, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Young man. Just kidding, Uncle. Well, remember, Ronnie goes to bed promptly at 8 o'clock. That's right, Leroy. Yeah, I know, I know. And just before bedtime, he always likes A graham cracker and a glass of milk. It's Leroy. You'll find the graham crackers in the bread box. And after I leave, Ronnie will try to tell you this is his night to watch a Western movie. Yeah? But it isn't. Hey, Leroy, why don't you go home and study? Well, sure, just checking you out. And now, can you remember all that, Uncle? Hey, Marjorie, don't worry. I know just how to handle Ronnie. I raised you and Leroy, didn't I? That's what has her worried. <laughs> Leroy, hit the books. I'm gone. Come along, Leroy. Good night, Ronnie. Good night, Mommy. Good night, Leroy. Good night, kid. Be a good little boy. Okay, Mommy. Don't you worry about Ronnie. Now, Uncle, if you want to phone me, Mother Thompson's number is Hillside 583. Confounded Leroy. We're gone. I think I didn't know the first thing about managing a child. Has it gone? Yeah. Ronnie. 
What are you doing with your cap pistols buckled over your pajamas? This is my night to watch a Western movie. It, it is not. You're not going to put anything over on me. I bet I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll soon be your bedtime. Come along now, and we'll get you graham crackers and milk. I don't want to go to bed. Yeah, let's get things ready anyway. Yeah, pour some milk. <laughs> Nothing like a glass of milk at bedtime. Yeah, let's see. Where are the graham crackers? In me. What? I already ate them. Zeke. Zeke who? <laughs> Never mind. Let's take our milk now and paddle off to bed. But, Uncle Moore, I don't want to go to bed. Well, climb in bed anyway, and I'll read you a story. Can't you read a story while I'm watching a western? No, Ronnie. Oh, we're missing a lot of cowboys, Uncle Moore. Well, put your guns away and climb into bed. And, and maybe we'll miss some Indians. Yeah, I doubt if any Indians are up this late. You drink your milk while I read the story. I don't want to go to bed. Yeah, this sounds like an interesting story. Little Miss Muffet sat in a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider. Get down beside her and frighten Miss Muffet away. Hey. Oh, you know that one. I know it until I'm sick of it. <laughs> well, let's try another one. Uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. He cut down the beanstalk, the giant falls on his head, and they live happily ever after. Oh, my goodness. Ronnie, it's 8 o'clock. Lights out. <laughs> Lights out didn't mean much to that boy. <laughs> He's been up and down like a jack in the box. Hey, 9.30. I don't want to miss Bertie on the radio. Yeah. I'm glad Ronnie got settled at last. I haven't heard anything for the past 15 minutes. What's that? Is Ronnie up again? He's up. <laughs> Ronnie, what are you doing? What are you getting it in, a dishpan? <laughs> that boy, he drinks so much water, I don't know why they put, don't put a hydrant in his room. <laughs> Ronnie, what are you doing in the kitchen? I'm looking for my little cup. Why don't you get your drink in the bathroom? I've got to come way out here to get one. Back to bed. You have to get to sleep. Maybe if I look at television, it'll put me to sleep. Screw it, Ronnie. Back in bed. Yeah, he's settled now. I can get comfortable with the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been a busy evening. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, for Ronnie, what are you doing? I'm trying to see. What are you doing, Dad? Five. Hey, never mind. It's after nine thirty. Now, please be quiet. Good night. I've already missed part of Bertie's program. Quite a cake she baked to put her on the radio. Uncle Moore. Yes, Ronnie? This comes after five. I know, I know. Shh. Now that Bertie Lee Coggins has given you her helpful cooking hints, we have a little surprise. It ain't no surprise to me. I've been practicing. <laughs> That's fine. Bertie will sing one of the top tunes of the day. You saw me crying in the chapel. The tears I shed were tears of joy. I know the meaning of contentment. Now I'm happy with the Lord. Just a plain and simple chapel where humble people go to pray. I pray the Lord that I'll grow stronger as I live from day to day. I search and I'd search, but I couldn't find no way on earth to gain peace 
of mine. Now I'm happy in the chapel where people are of one accord. We gather in the chapel just to see and praise the Lord. Ah, that was beautiful. Thank you, sir. By George, it certainly was. You can sing as well as you can bake cakes. Thank you for being with us, folks. This is WSUM, the voice of Summerfield. And now we present an organ interlude. Yeah, better turn the radio down a little bit. You want to wake Ronnie? <laughs> Getting sleepy myself. Yeah, I mustn't fall asleep on the job like some babysitters would. Yeah, better turn off the music. Too soothing. <laughs> An active night. Ronnie was hard to bed down. You know, the situation's well in hand. Yes, sir. Uh... What was that? Auntie? Uh, well, Marjorie, you're home. Auntie, were you asleep? You asleep? Yes, of course not. You're comfortable, but not asleep. <laughs> Did everything go all right? Oh, fine. Great. Good. I'd better go in and check Ronnie. You well, it isn't necessary. He's in bed in the bed for hours. Well, I always like to see that he's covered. Yeah, let's take a look. He is an active little rascal. Uncle Moore. Yeah, we don't want to wake him. He isn't in his bed. What? He must be there someplace. Ronnie? Ronnie? Ronnie! Oh, he's gone! <laughs> I don't know how you could have gotten out of the house, Marjorie. I was sitting right there. Oh, let's hope Bertie knows something about him. Bertie? Yes, sir. Bertie, have you seen Ronnie? Ronnie? No, Miss Marjorie, I just got home. He's not in his little bed, Bertie. He's not. He's gone. Gone? I thought Miss Gilsey was right there with him. Hey, Bertie, this is no time for thinking. Come on, let's wake up Leroy and search the neighborhood. Uncle, I don't know how you could have let this happen. You, of all people. Now, Marjorie, let's not get excited. Let's be calm. Let's call the police and the fire department. Leroy! Uh-oh. Hey, look, Maggie. Oh, there's my baby. Where is he? Shh. Sleeping in bed is Leroy. Ain't that a picture? 
Oh, it is to me. <sighs> hey, what's going on? Yeah, well, Leroy, Ronnie wasn't home, and you we were just checking. <laughs> Ronnie, are you in bed with me? Yeah. Hello, Mommy. Hello, Ronnie, baby. And you said you weren't asleep, Uncle Mort? What a babysitter. <laughs> well, I could have dozed off for a split second. You shouldn't have left me, Ronnie. But you were snoring so loud, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> Let's everybody go to bed. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Just a last reminder to get your entry blank for Kraft Oil Sensational Name the Cake Contest at your grocer's tomorrow. It's the easiest contest in the world to enter. Just send in a name for the wonderful new cake made with lighter-bodied Kraft Oil. First prize is a new Ford Victoria every year for five years. Other prizes include 1,850 Dormeyer electric appliances. Just name the cake that's made with Kraft Oil. Get your entry blank tomorrow. Hello, Auntie Bertie. Hello, Miss Marjorie. Well, nice to see you, my dear. I didn't know you'd ever come over again after I went to sleep babysitting last night. Well, Auntie, I've forgotten all about it. It could have happened to anybody, and... Ronnie was partly to blame. He's such a little pixie. Marjorie, I'm delighted you feel that way. In fact, I uh, brought you a little present. A present? For me? Ain't that nice? <laughs> well, thank you, my dear. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to the twins. You're all right. Where do you suppose it is, Miss Gilfrey? You will. You will soon see, baby. <laughs> Marjorie always puts a lot of thought into her gifts. An alarm clock. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gilded Sleeve is played by Willard Waterman. It's an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Richard Beale, and Dick LeGrand. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Food Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. What goes into your favorite sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft prepared mustard. Groucho March and you bet your life tonight on NBC.